So in this segment, we're going to talk about how do I name my sources, map them to buttons, and also configure my, my multi-viewers so that I can map them as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our computer that's running our dashboard, and we're going to bring up dashboard. We're going to select the configuration menu, and this is where we can come in to configure the switcher. You'll notice on the first tab, this is your reference menu. You won't have to worry about this. You're going to be operating in the same video mode at all times, but you'll want to go to the mnemonics tab first. So in the mnemonics tab, this is where you can come in to rename all of your sources, making it very easy to assign a name that you want. So instead of lobby one, maybe I want it called cam one. And as soon as I click away, it will update the mnemonic. I can change the color of the mnemonic, and I can also apply inversion to the text if I want it. We'll just switch those back to the way they were. You can also change the size, so I could go to a large type font, or I could go to a small font. Uh, in most cases, the medium font fits nicely. If I wanted to change the name of graphics F to expression, it would just be as simple as going XPR. And of course, when I click away, it instantly updates it. So on the left-hand side, this is your physical input names. So these are the hard physical inputs that they can route into you, and then you can name them anything that you want. On the right-hand side, this is your internal buses as well as your outputs, like your aux buses. An internal bus, such as the color black, maybe you don't want BK for the color background, BG. Media stores, you can rename these as well. These would be your default names. For some of the aux buses, it can be helpful because maybe I have an onset monitor that I'm feeding from aux bus 2, so I want to rename this onset maybe R for right. So now it makes it really nice and easy when in my multi viewer, I'll now see that aux 2 feeds onset right and currently black is assigned to it. So it's very easy for me to change it by going, well, I want aux 2 and I want to assign lobby 3 to it. And now I can see that aux2 is currently being fed to onset R, and lobby3 is the source that's inside of it. Once I've physically set up my naming convention that I want, I can come to the panel, and I can select Menu, Config, and click on the middle knob for Bus Map. Now it's very simple. The first button is going to select which cross point you want to assign. So here we're going to go to cross point one. And then you can assign the primary side, any source I want. And I can see it changing as I do it. As well as the secondary or the shifted side. So whatever I want on the shift side. So in this case, I have black. And on the shifted side, I have the color background. If I hold down the shift button, the mnemonics change to show me what is selected on the back side. So I can simply press that source to get at it. When something is shifted and selected, it'll light up the shift button as well as the shifted side source. So very easy to select and see what sources are currently actively on air. So now that we know how to set up our bus map, it's very useful to also set up your multi-viewers. So there's a tab for multi-viewers. I click on my tab. The first multi-viewer is my view control screen. So the one that's in front of me, as well as will be in the upper left-hand side in the large monitor. So on this one, I've got a layout showing me exactly which sources are where. You always want preview to be the upper left box, and you always want program to be in the upper right box. But all of the other assignments, you can choose to change however you like. Maybe I'd rather have my cameras grouped in a certain fashion, like one, two, three, and maybe I want four in this order. So as you can see, it makes it very easy to group items in a manner in which you would rather have them. Anything can be selected, and that will be viewed, as well as the name, the tally, and all that information automatically follows along. So you don't have to worry about doing any of that. You'll see the second sub-tab for Multi Viewer 2. Multi Viewer 2 
is my large right screen inside of this, inside of Edit One. On the upper right hand side, you can select what layout you want. Currently, we're using the upper left layout, but there's all kinds of different layouts. Depending how many sources you really need to see at one time, you may want to decrease it so that you don't have too much clutter going on up there. Something as simple as say, I want three cameras. So I want to see camera one, camera two, and just camera three. Or maybe it's a four camera shoot and I want to see all four cameras up there. So we use the two by two grid, making it very easy to have four cameras, nice and large and visible. With every single source selection box, you also have individual assignments. Like I can turn a border on on a box by box basis. They will bring on a white border, making it easy to see where the picture is. You can bring on four by three safe zone aspect markers if you're worried about safe zone. You can have the label for the source name on or off. You can also mark whether or not the tally information for preview or program is enabled. And finally, you can select whether you want the label to be at the top or at the bottom of the screen. So that's how you do your multi-viewer and bus map setup.